So good morning, everyone. My name is Xu Jiahu from Singapore University of Technology and Design. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about contrastive disentanglement for authorship attribution. This paper is a joint work with uh, my colleagues in uh, ICTD Social AI Group. So what's the authorship attribution? It's a task of given a text and how can we identify the author who write it? So for now, there are a lot of existing authorship attribution technologies. We always classify them into two types. Uh, one type is the traditional uh, methods, which including the stereometry and ngram methods. And there are also a lot of deep learning based models, including RN, Science, BERT, Roberta, etc. But when we do the uh, when we do the exploration in this field, we just found there are still uh, two main problems in this area. Uh, the first one is that uh, for the current authorship attribution method, they cannot perform very well in the scenarios with uh, topic shifts. And the second problem is that for now, all the authorship attribution tasks are all based on the individual level. The, indi the individual level means given text, we want to identify the individual author who write it. But sometimes we are also curious about uh, where the text is, uh, is written. So for example, given a tweet, we are curious about uh, the tweets is from Singapore or from Thailand or from, from Malaysia, etc. Uh, so based on these two problems, we uh, did the following exploration, which are the two main contributions in this paper. We proposed the contrastive disentanglement method. Uh, this method is designed to disentangle the content from linguistic style within the latent space which is useful to uh, improve the, the AA models in topic shift scenarios. And for the regional level at authorship attribution task, we collected a new regional authorship attribution data set from, uh, from Twitter. I will show some details later. And our contrastive disentanglement method is a two-stage training process. In the first stage, uh, it called contrastive learning. Here we use uh, supervised contrastive loss to train a style encoder. Here which, uh, we selected BERT, since we, uh, we know that BERT is a very effective encoder model. After we got the first encoder, we go into the stage two, which is called mutual information for style content disentanglement. And here we use another content encoder also a, a BERT to extract the content representation. So for now, we already have two, uh, two encoders, one style encoder and one content encoder. After that, we just apply a mutual information loss. Here we choose the VCLAP estimator to minimize the mutual information between those two encoders. So in our experiments, we selected four data sets. One is the regional level data set, which is collected by our group. And the other three data sets are individual level data set, uh, including CCAT, Twitter, and IMDB. These are all widely used data set in authorship attribution tasks. And for the regional level data set, uh, it collected from Twitter, uh, including more than four, 400,000 English tweets and cover uh, 80,000 users and uh, in six different locations, including Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Manila, Jakarta, Hanoi, and Bangkok. So from our experiment results, we selected the micro F1 and micro F1 scores. Uh, from this table, we can see that the contrastive disentanglement model can consistently outperform all the other baseline models. The baseline models including both traditional methods and uh, deep learning based methods. And except that, we also found another interesting thing is the F1 scores in regional tweets, uh, uh, regional datasets are lower than the individual datasets. It's mostly because that uh, for individual level 
uh, authors, uh, they always have more distinct uh, writing styles than a group of authors in a region. So except that we also use the TSNI algorithm to visualize the post style embeddings for three models, the basic BERT, on contrast, only contrastive learning and contrast uh, and contrastive disentanglement method. Uh, in the first line is that we randomly selected uh, uh, 100 posts from each region in regional level data set. And the, the second line, uh, the figure D, E, and F are uh, from like we randomly selected 50 posts from each other in CCAT data set. So from, uh, from these figures, we can see that the basic bird cannot do the classification very well because all the clusters are still very messy. Uh, and after using the contrastive learning method, like uh, it do can, uh, it can improve the classification result because there are like uh, some clusters there. But when they see the, like for example, when we see the figure B, we, uh, in uh, the center of figure B, we find out that uh, this method still have some problems for some complicated samples. Okay, then after we using the contrastive disentanglement method, all the clusters just become more clear. So it shows that this method can help the encoder, uh, can, can improve the encoder's capability to extract the style uh, representations. Yeah, uh, and also we, uh, except that we did a case study for regional level A uh, authorship attribution, uh, because we want to explore if there are some special linguistic features in each region. Uh, so here we randomly selected three samples from each region and to calculate the, uh, to calculate the similarity between these texts with the local uh, style representations, uh, regional style representations. So here we just found some interesting thing is that, for example, in Bangkok, people always add na or ka in the text. And in Singapore, uh, people always use la, le in the, in the text. So it shows that um, for, regional, uh, for, for regional users, they do have some uh, specific li uh, linguistic features. Like for each region, they have their own linguistic signatures. And I will do a brief conclusion here. So we propose the a new method, contrastive disentanglement, to effectively separate the content and style information uh, in order to improve the attribution, uh, authorship attribution performance. And then regarding to the regional level authorship attribution, we also collected a new data set for this to fill in this gap. For the, for, uh, for the future work, uh, we are willing to focus on uh, exploring regional and cultural writing styles, because for now we just include six locations and all of them are in South Asia. So maybe in the future, we are willing to include a broader range of culture and regions. Okay, and uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, I'm going to take questions.